Well, what the heck is this mess? Well, I guess it means we're going to plant again. Hey, this is Henry with Brainstorm Makers. Don't forget to watch our video on Friday that will provide all the details on how to enter our giveaway. Well, it's time to get started outside. It's already hot, but it's not going to get any cooler today. So come along with us while we get the beans planted today. This will probably be only part of the beans that get planted this year, but I'm going to start first with Carson, which is one of our favorite yellow wax beans. I had to go to a secondary source this year, so we'll see how their seeds come up. To be honest, my experience with their seeds this year has been poor, so crossing our fingers. I do have other things like Royal Burgundy and, and Provider Bush Beans that are from my usual source, which is Johnny's. So first I got to get the bed set up, so we're going to go on over there and get started. Now this is the bed that we're going to put the beans in. The only thing in here right now is a couple of flowers. There's a large California poppy right in the center. There's two other love and a miss in here and that's about it so it's a couple of weeds but most everything else some rocks from holding down things I watered this thoroughly yesterday with some drip irrigation just to get some moisture into the bed and now I'm gonna strip it out Okay, we're going to see which one of these techniques works best. I'm going to be laying out three rows here, and I'm going to leave three plants in this bed, hopefully. Love and a mist here, love and a mist right there, and one volunteer basil plant from last year that randomly popped up, so I'll take it. We try and use volunteers whenever we can, as long as they're not going to totally disrupt the planet. and. A single volunteer basil plant does not qualify as disrupting the planet. I am seeing some ants in here that I'm not thrilled with. So I'll have to figure out why they're in here. Mm. Looks like somebody started making a house in here. I do not appreciate that. <laughs> okay, well if they persevere we're going to have to put down some ant poison. But, meanwhile, let's get to it here. The first bean I'm going to plant is Carson, which is a yellow wax bean. It is a very heavy favorite family, a family favorite because it is a high production bean. From experience, I know that it's not uncommon to get 20 or 30 
bean pods off a single plant at a single harvest once the plant gets going. So, we're going to see what happens. Let's see which one of these works better here. This needs to be... I need some depth on this row. One to two inches. I have to admit, I'm kind of holding my breath on these seeds. The last batch of seeds we planted from the supplier were almost a complete fail. And they rotted when they shouldn't have. So we'll see. The reason I didn't use seeds from Johnny's was they didn't have them. And that's been a problem with Carson for the last couple of years. There have been multiple seed crop failures. trees are pretty much done with their pollen thing, but the weeds are now doing their thing, so. <laughs> Sometimes when we dig down, we'll actually find, there's my love and a mist I'm trying to keep safe, uh, we'll actually find solanum sticks that were in the process of growing up. So you'll always see me stop to check because I do not want to allow solanum to grow in here. It's a wild nightshade with some nasty stickers on most of the varieties. And it's very hard to get rid of. We have a happy butterfly over here looking for damp soil. Well, I better get going, otherwise <laughs> the soil will be dry. But <laughs> I get around to it. Okay, so what I did was I just planted one package of beans. I'm going to keep these as a reserve. I wasn't sure how many were in here. It says 200 seeds. They're planted thickly because I have to admit I'm skeptical. So let me get these back in the shade and get this going. Now what I need to do is cover these up. Jack and I are headed out to the greenhouse. Come on, Jack. Expect it to be about 100 degrees in there. We'll see. Eh, not quite as bad as I was afraid of. Not exactly chilly in here though. Whew. Oh man, it's hot out there this morning. But I still have a little bit more planting I need to get done this morning. So I thought I'd drag you guys in here. Now I'll need to check my notes because honestly I don't remember <laughs> which day these things were planted. But you may remember that a week or so ago, I planted some seeds. And some of the seeds I planted were in dirt 
and I topped them with perlite. And then some other seeds I planted were in rock wool. Now, this is our nursery over here. These are suckers that have been cut off of tomatoes. But I'm gonna bring you guys in close so you can take a look at those blocks that I put in the other day and things like that. So first, here are the seeds that were planted in dirt. You'll notice the um, perlite has turned brown from, that's because it, it wicks up the brown water from the dirt. But every single pak choy and then maybe an extra one that fell over here has come up. So I have plenty of pak choy. Now this aisle was left bare. This is New England pie pumpkin, pumpkins, and it has not shown any signs so far of coming up. I have to admit I'm not thrilled with that. I looked up how long these things should take to sprout, and they say three to ten days. Well, I know it's been more than three or t three days, but not more than ten. So we'll give them a few more days, and if they don't pop up, I will replant them because I'm determined. But in general, Pretty darn happy with those puck joy at least. Now, the rock wool. Check it out. There's one seed in each of those, and so far we can see one, two, three, four, five plants that have come up far enough to stick up above the rock wall. Now that's not totally stellar, but it's not awful either. I'll give the guys that are there that haven't done anything yet a little bit more time and if they don't pop up I will replant. There's our hydroponic tomatoes. They're looking very happy. These are our wicking tote cucumbers. These are greenhouse cucumbers so they don't need pollinators or anything else. Although we do get breeze in here from the fans so yeah. There's one lonely cabbage down at the bottom. Didn't have the heart to pull him out because he's just, he was like a little teeny shoot down there. Didn't even think he'd survive. And he's more than survived, he's grown. So we'll see if he actually manages to do anything. I think it's a bit too hot in here for him, but hey, you know, if he makes it, he makes it. If he doesn't, he gave his all. These guys, I am looking forward to. You'll see there's cucumbers coming along so I keep watching these we have had a few squash bugs in here in fact there's another one or as I like to call them creatures from outer space there we go you may wonder what this is and I kind of wondered that myself this is stuff that came out of one of my seed trays now the weird thing is this was purchased potting soil and purchased seeds and it initially these looked like they were all onions but these two plants are actually some sort of a sedge which is a wild weed this on the other hand is an onion so what I need to do actually is get these two out of here and just leave the onion but I just haven't gotten around to it but I thought that was bizarre and it made me wonder where the, the sedge came from. We don't get that kind of plant around here because honest, they, uh, they like it wetter <laughs> than we are. So yeah, I'm thinking that came in with either the potting soil or the seeds. And I kind of admit I was not amused by that because I thought I had some worthwhile uh, onions going there for a minute. Okay, now I have decided that I am modestly happy with the seeds that have popped up in here. These are all lettuce of different kinds. And now I'm going to add something else. I'm going to add some pak choy. You can see there are holes there. But the, the, a couple of them got kind of mashed from being squashed in a box.
And there we go. So those are ready to go. If you've watched us before, these are just uh, little rock wool starter plugs. They're standard equipment for hydroponic setups. They are literally made out of mineral fiber. So all you do is you take your rock wool, you stick it in water. This is a tray of water right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop one seed in each hole. <laughs> um, this pak choy has pretty darn good germination. It was a 99% germination when I bought it. As you can see from the other ones, it's pretty close to 100% there. So even if they're a little older now, we're still going to try them just the way they are. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. And we'll see what happens. You have to admit that was a lot easier than <laughs> what I just did out in the garden. And I recognize there are limitations to what we just did in the garden. That was great for bush beans, for instance. Uh, obviously, it's easy to plant pak choy out there, too. And we've got plenty of pak choy coming up in here. I wanted to exp continue experimenting into the summer to see how long we can continue growing pak choy outside. But we decided, since we're going to try some other things in the greenhouse, too, we might as well add pak choy to that collection in here. So hopefully you find this interesting. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, because we're going to be doing all kinds of new stuff. And... This project here is just getting started. Henry was collecting some pieces together this morning. In the process of scrounging around, discovered some old stuff we have that will let him get started a little bit faster than he thought he was originally going to be able to. So that's a good thing. And we also have a couple of upgrades to our system that we need to work on. So there's never a dull moment around here. <laughs> At least if you like gardening and repairing things <laughs> and doing crazy stuff. Yeah, that's us. So until next time, take it easy, be safe, keep growing stuff. Bye.